what's good guys it's your boy chaos bringing you guys another video today i'm bringing you guys a weekend league game but it's gonna be a full gameplay so i'm gonna be breaking everything down that i do uh, i did this uh last week and you guys loved it so i'm doing it again so basically what i'm gonna be doing is just tell you guys my thought process why i do what i did tell you guys what mistakes i made and what i would do differently and uh as well as things that i think i did well and why i did them so uh i hope you guys are gonna enjoy that if, uh, I'm going to be running my schemes, uh, so I'm going to be running trips tight end. But on defense, I'm actually going to be running 3-3-5. If you guys haven't already, you guys can check the card above. I have the playlist for the 3-3-5, all the stuff I like to do out of 3-3-5. I'm um, probably going to make a small update to it soon, um, which will be added to that playlist when, it, when the time comes. However, for now, all the stuff's in there. And uh, as far as uh, schemes go, if you guys want to check out my offensive ebook and my defensive ebook, which cover trips tight end, fully extensive, very, very detailed, on that as well as 335 odd and big nickel over g those are guys those are gonna be in the description below so make sure you guys check those out um let's jump into it man all right boys so let's jump into this man you guys see it it's a weekend league game it was actually one of the first five games and yes i have to excuse me i'm still a little nasally i'm still getting over a little bit of sickness but it was one of the first five games so i was actually really surprised to uh play a pretty good player but this guy knew what he was doing um, on both sides of the ball, as well as um, he had like a really, really, really good run that gave me a ton of trouble uh, stopping, especially with the with the way, way the uh, patch is working. So essentially, like you do a lot of fall forward, you do a, um, and it's just really tough to stop the run right now. So he gave me a lot of trouble. Definitely was a good player. So this is gonna be a really good game for you guys to uh, look at. And I also um, had to come back a little bit. He had a little bit of a lead on me, so. Uh, it's a really, really good game to look over, and I hope you guys are going to enjoy it, man. So, um, right here, you guys just see me making my subs. This is 335, as I mentioned in the intro. If you guys want to check that out, it's in the card above. Um, I'm using my, my face cam from the stream, but it's the top right corner, right above where my face cam is, um, where you guys can check that out. Um, I've been just messing around with different defenses lately, man, just trying to figure out what I think is the absolute best. Um, so, right now, what I'm thinking is... Um, 335 odd is the best blitz still. If you're sending five people, 335 odd is the most consistent. Big nickel over G, which both of those two are in my ebook, is probably the best overall shed defense. If you're only going to shed every time, you're only going to shed, and I say big nickel over G is the best, just to send three every single time, send four every single time. Now, if you want to be able to shed and blitz, I think 335 is the best defense. So it's, those are really the three defense sources that I like. Um, and that's kind of my thought process on them. So right here, you guys see him. He's in a gun tray wide flex. Very, very good formation. I did a mini scheme on it early in the year. It's got a lot of good plays. Uh, and he utilized Playmaker a lot from it. So right there, he hit me with the, um, in the plays SE corner. Yeah, you guys see in the bottom of my SE corner. It's got a really good tight end post, which no zones guard. Um, and it can beat man a lot of the time because it's got two breaks on it. And then he had that playmaker drag, and it's got a table route from the running back. And that post route drags the cloud flat a lot. So um, if they have a table route, as you see right there, it can kill me. So like I always say on my first drive, I'm really just evaluating. I'm seeing what he likes to do. So right away I see he's in gun tray wide flex. Um, I see he has playmaker on his middle receiver. So I need to note that. And I need to note that um, he's sending five out a lot. So he's going to be making some quick reads. So I'm going to have to – if I'm not going to uh, – if I'm going to blitz, I have to take away his early reads. And if I'm going to play coverage, I'm going to have to play really, really good coverage because I have to take away all five routes. I'm not just worried about three routes or four routes. I have to take away all five. So right there, you see him hit the post route, the one I was telling you about that's very, very good. So he's kind of dying me up right now. But really, this first drive, like I always say, is kind of a feel-out drive. I like to see what he's doing. So gun tray by flex, I know what he's doing now. Um, like, I'm kind of just trying to pick up on what he's doing. As you see, I, I took away his table route that time. And... Uh, I got a quick shed and he had to throw the ball away and we got intentional grounding. So good job getting ahead on the sticks now. So I'm second to 20 here. If I don't give, if I, I'm just making them settle for three now. That's really my goal. Um, I shouldn't give up 20 yards in two plays and he'll take his three if he's smart. So uh, it's tough down here in the red zone. So I would expect him to take his three if we force him to. So let's, we'll see how this next two plays go. Right here, you see me uh, manning people up, just trying to take away their routes. I actually, I think when I was in the middle of the game so as I, I mentioned to you guys he was playmaker and his middle receiver i don't think i really picked up on that it was his middle receiver who's playmaker that's why i made up the outside guy there to try to take away his playmaker and i just realized right there 
that's why I realized for the rest of the game that it was the middle receiver, not the outside guy, because um, he faded he faded the outside guy and playmaker the drag from the middle. So as you see this time, I made up the middle guy to make sure I take that away. Just a quick adjustment that I made in game, just knowing who he's going to want to playmaker and being able to take that away. So right there, we had a spy for Vic, uh, and we ended up making him settle for uh, get to a fourth down and settle for three. So um, the adjustments I really picked up on right there is he likes to send five out a lot. He did it pretty much every play. He playmakers in the middle receiver, not his outside guy, and uh, and then he's in gun tray by flex, and that seemed to be his main formation because he didn't come out of it for any play. So. That's where I learned that drive. Um, really sorry, guys. I'm, if I sound nasally, I'm sorry. I just, I've been really, really sick lately. Um, I'm just now getting over it. I'm sorry. I actually feel a lot better. I'm not really feeling sick at all. I just still have some backed up congestion. So hopefully it's not too bad. Um, but and hopefully you guys can't hear the music in the background. My roommates are playing music, but I tested it and it didn't seem like you guys could hear it. So hopefully you can't. If you can. This YouTube probably is getting, this video is probably getting booted, so you probably won't be hearing it anyways. <laughs> but so this is our first drive. Just like just like with defense, it's really a feel out drive. I want to see what formation he's running, and then what he likes to do out of the formation that he's in. So I set my eyes, did my subs, all that, and uh, we're ready to go. So right away, I can already. If this was the first possession, even I could already tell this guy's a good player. He called timeout to make sure he had all his subs right. Um, on defense, somebody who actually does pre like pre drive adjustments like audible sub stuff like that, they usually know what they're doing a little bit. If a guy doesn't know what he's doing, he'll just call his play right off rip, uh, first second. So I come off, I, I come out, I play, uh, I run my favorite new play, PA slot corner. And I saw right away he crossed man the whole squad, whole team was bagged right there. Um, I thought the post beat the man a little bit, but he ended up getting bagged up. This play is actually usually pretty good against cross man, so I'm actually going to go back to it a lot. It's right there. The man-to-man -man just played better than usual. Um, and right there, we threw our drag, pick up a few. Um, I thought we had the corner route there on second glance. Um, sometimes it's hard, harder to fit that route in, but I really did think we had it on, on that play right there. So um, I'll, probably, I'll probably go back to that later. I'm going back to the same play. I really just like the post route um, is very, very good. And right there, so <laughs> I realized he took his deep blue off every time before that. I forgot to, I forgot this happened. So he was taking his deep blue off on the, on the running back and tight end side. But he's manning up the tight end, so like you can't streak or fade the tight end because he's just going to get manned up and bagged. So I streak my running back, and it's literally going to be a touchdown. But I, uh, I got shed, and I had to throw it too early. And I ended up throwing a pick, so good, good thought by me. Um, I guess it didn't work out because I got shed really, really quickly, um, or at least I felt like I was getting shed quickly, so I, I threw it early, um, which sucks because even though I did have the touchdown there, I didn't get to throw it because um, because I got shed it, but now. I gave away, so I gave away that I saw that. He knows, okay, he knows the running back streaks a touchdown. I need to be on that now. You know what I'm saying? So now that he's aware of it, he's probably not going to give me it again. Now, I'd be stupid not to test him again at some point during the game just to make sure, okay, he does, uh, like, he does know that I know. Like, you know what I mean? So it'd be stupid not to test him again, but he likely is not going to give me that again. So it kind of sucks to not get anything out of it. Um, with a good play call where you end up getting a pick instead of what you thought was going to be a possible touchdown. So, definitely sucks. But, second goal from the three. With the way the meta plays right now, it's going to be tough, tough, tough to get a stop. Um, pretty much everything is going to kill. Um, goal line, you can just run QB sneak and you get free four yards. And then if, if they, like, it's just, it's tough to stop it. He actually goes to this QB draw, which is the same personnel. It's out of the Panthers playbook. It's with uh, QB, I think it's like QB power, or QB blast or something. And it's the same personnel as uh, goal line. So that's something else versatile that he has to add to his game too. So I already have to worry about QB sneak getting four or five yards with the way the meta works. And now I have to worry about a QB power or whatever. So sucks to have to worry about, but... Good drive by him, and we're down 10 nothing. We put ourselves in a big hole here, so we're going to have to come back from. Um, and it's going to be very, very tough to do, considering 
I didn't even freaking complete a pass on my first. I guess I completed one, but I didn't. I didn't even get a first down on my first drive. So we're gonna have to figure something out. He's cross manning, and we're gonna have to really, really pay attention when you're when you're playing someone who's cross manning like this. You have to really lock in on what they're doing. So like, see where they're cross manning from. And as you see, I tested him with a streak right there, and he didn't give he didn't give it up. So it's not there anymore. The running back was taken away. But what I was saying was, you have to really pay attention. Okay, where are they manning where? So where can I actually beat them over the top, right? Where are they manning from so far away that I can streak and get a touchdown? Where are they um, are they cross manning from so far that if I hit them with a zig or an out route, will that hurt them? Just tons of different things like that. You just have to pay attention to on every given play. So you, when you're running a play, you're not only looking for, okay, who's open. You're looking for, okay, where are, they, where are they manning from? Where are they hurting me from? And that'll help you a lot too. So it's not the easiest thing to do, but it's something you really need to pay attention to because it'll help you get routes open. So like, for example, if they're straight manning square and I put square on the drag, he'll probably beat it. But if they're cross manning square, then the drag's probably not going to beat it. You know what I'm saying? So it just... It just means like, okay, where are they manning from and where can you beat them over the top? So right here, I go to one of my new favorite plays, counter go with an elite route specialist uh, on the outside. And we actually have our drag of our tight end wide open, but we can't get the pass off. So we're in a tough spot here. We're in fourth and three where we're like, all right, if I don't get off the field right here and get, in, uh, get a first down, we're going to be in a huge hole and it's going to be tough to climb out of. So big fourth down here. Um, and he's been bagging me up. I have been all the way boxed. Uh, but I just have not been doing a good job. I haven't been doing a good job stepping up in the pocket. And I haven't been doing a good job of getting my receivers open. So uh, I need to take some of my own advice right now and just figure out what he's doing and kind of put something together. Right here, I go to a zig route for my tight end. He was butt naked. But I actually get a little greedy and I hit the crosser. I saw he did have a step on him. So it, was, it wasn't a bad read by any means. But on a fourth and three, when you have a guy wide open for five yards... You take it 10 out of 10 times 11 out of 10 times take it I'm, I'm mad at myself for not taking that zig from that tight end right there um, it's something you have to do but regardless I found something that's gonna beat it so the zig from the tight end is gonna work for me something that's also gonna work is the drag from the tight end right there um, sorry if you guys can hear the music uh, I'll try to figure it out uh, mid mid edits or whatever but what I was saying right there is so I see that I see that the tight ends really getting open on a lot of stuff. The drags from the tight end are beating stuff. The zigs from the tight ends are beating stuff because he's pretty, he's basically straight man. So anything's gonna really beat it if it's a man beater from him. So that's something to note. Um, something else to note is that um, is that that post route if he takes off his cloud is beating man on the cross man because that's two times in a row I was able to throw. Um, Steve Smith over the middle with that post when he was cross man so that's good to note as well and those are just things just things in the first half you put in your back pockets things that you are noting in your head okay I know these are working I can go back to them later in the game so just just stuff to write down kind of in your mental mental notes but third and eight here it's really really hard to score in the red zone against cross man really you really have to just hope for an ag on a one-on-one because -on -one they're gonna man up every single person on your team and then they're gonna have some zones out there some clouds maybe a yellow here or there um, so you really just have to find some openings that you can try to work with um, not the easiest thing to do you kinda of have to get lucky um, that's really how the red zone works now in this game you kinda of just have to get a lucky high ball if you catch them you catch them if you don't you don't and as you guys can see we try to go to uh, some curl routes but they're all man I don't want to force anything because to be honest with you it's still my ball at halftime and even though we've struggled like super struggle the entire game I need points right now to make this one possession game and then if I get one more stop before halftime we're in great shape to <clears throat> to just be right right back in the game like at halftime I'll be down one possession and it'll be my ball so I need to make sure I get points there I can't force anything in now if maybe it was a different situation maybe if I really felt like I needed seven there like three wasn't gonna cut it in a game where I needed to come back by more maybe I force one in there and try to catch it but uh, circumstances there say just take the sack and take your three um, and move on to fight another day so right here I know he's been killing me with gun tray Y flex I know he's been killing me with the with the playmaker the playmaker drag and I, I know he's hit me with the table route a few few times so I need to make sure I take those away something he's also been doing somewhat is that uh, um, 
elite, I think it's a uh, deep route specialist uh, crossing route that uh, he's been doing from circle a lot. So I need to make sure I lurk on all those things and make sure I take away the drag with a man. So as you guys can see, I have the playmaker drag taken away and I have a hard flat on the right to take away his table route if he sends it out. He doesn't send it out, but we have him pretty much all bagged up and he just throws it up for grabs and we can't get the pick. So that one's tough. I mean, we get we play the perfect defense. Um, we just can't get the interception. Uh, right there, those are plays that your guys have to make for you. If they don't make them, then it's going to be harder to win. But regardless, I thought we were happy with our defensive adjustments there. So I'm going to go back to the exact same thing. Except I'm going to blitz him this time because he didn't send his running back out. So since he didn't send his running back, I knew I'd have to put hard flats. And right there, he throws the same pick. And he catches it. So we played back-to-back -back perfect plays of defense. We read his play perfectly, um, and we just didn't we just didn't get rewarded for it, man. He got rewarded. He got an incompletion where it should have been a pick, and he got a catch where it should have been a pick. Um, so just gotta fight through it. Not much else I can really say about that. He uh, he got a fortunate play there, and we just move on and keep fighting. We got to hold a three here, though. There's no way if I give up seven here, there's almost no way I'm coming back. So I have to hold a three here. And if we're down 10 at halftime, we're down 10 at halftime, we can try to figure it out. Um, but we're going to try our best here to not give up any points before before the end of the half. And if we're able to do that, we'll fight. We'll be able to fight through it. Plain and simple. So first and 10 here. Uh, first and goal, I should say, um, from the 9-yard line. And uh, we're going to do a lot of cross manning here. Make sure that he can't do anything in the red zone. Just like I couldn't. Just literally manning up the whole team. Um, and making sure he can't throw a curl route. So the only person not manned is the outside guy on square, and uh, we have a yellow in the cloud on his side in case he's uh, in case he tries to do something with him. So good defense right there. I like that. Even though we ran the ball, if he had passed, I'm not really worried about it because I feel like we had good good adjustments there. Um, if he's smart right here, to be honest with you, I get two more runs no matter what. Like. Second and goal and third and goal, I'm running the ball. Uh, just to make sure I have no time left. At least, at least on this second goal, he has to run the ball. Because there is no way I'm giving me the ball back with any more time than at least 20 seconds. And right there, he goes to his, the one that he actually goes to a lot more later. This pistol run was very effective against me. It was like, uh, I think it was a triple option. So he had the option to keep as well. But it, it gave me a lot of trouble when he was just holding the handoff. Um, I, I didn't really have a great job stopping it and do a great job stopping it throughout the entire game and you're going to see that I'm kind of just I'm kind of just winging it the entire time um, so right here if I'm him I probably run again or at least pass and take my sack if nothing's wide wide open I don't want to really, really want to throw an incompletion uh, he's smart and he runs the ball and luckily we're able to stop him and force him to take three here so he shouldn't hike here and I'm pretty sure he doesn't if I remember correctly um, so going into halftime we're down 10 I'm I'm happy with that. Like, with the way that I felt the game is gone, I played awful offensively. Gave him short fields. He got a lucky drive down to get three before a half. Um, to only be down ten with the way I've played and with the way the game's gone, I'm not too upset about it. Uh, it's my ball at halftime. I feel like we can go get seven and make this a really close ball game pretty much right away. So, right here, we just know we need points. Three, I guess it's not the end of the world if we get three here because I felt like we have played pretty good defense um, for the most part. The first drive, we didn't play great, um, but we kind of learned his tendencies after that, and I felt like we did a good job. Um, but offensively, we haven't played great, so if, we could, if we're able to find a way to get seven here, it puts us in a lot better spot. Um, so, but we need, we definitely need to put something together. And I'm going to this PS lock corner play, which I, I realize is really, really good for me to end the half. <clears throat> I try to catch him slacking again. As I said before, I uh, that running back streak, I wanted to go back to it. He manned it up. So he was really on that. Ever since I threw that first pick, he was on it. So I noted that, and I don't think I go back to it the rest of the game. It just it wasn't, it wasn't getting open. He was doing a good job on defense against it. We throw a wide open pass, though, and... Unfortunately, we don't get a completion, and of course, he lurks it the next time. So, in this game, it's rough when you actually draw up a good play that works. 
and you throw an incompletion on it off like an overthrow or a drop or something of that sort because if you're playing a decent player, they're not going to give you the next play. Like, this guy, I did the exact same play, and he used it at that time. Like, of course, a smart player would. So it's, it's rough when you throw an incompletion and, uh, and you don't get what you, like, you don't get what you think you deserve on it. So, regardless, three straight incompletions, and we're in a bad spot again, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. For the first uh, two and a half quarters of this game, I was boxed out of my mind. You guys are probably thinking, why am I buy? Why would I ever buy this guy's ebook? Like he can't do anything. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I pick it up. Like I really do. It's just I was struggling early on in this game. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was just a, it was a early in the stream. I hadn't gotten a rhythm yet. I don't know what it was. But we we figure it out though. And right here, we uh, we get lucky. We do. We do. But sometimes it takes a little luck to wake you up. For the rest of this game, I'm going to be on this guy. Uh, I'm going to be literally locked in. So I wasn't really taking my own advice early in the game. What I said to you guys was, you need to pay attention where they're manning you from and uh, who they're manning up on. So in order to do that, you have to um, you have to actually pay attention. I'm not really doing a good job of paying attention. And, uh, and I just keep running the same play over and over again, and it's getting boxed. But you're going to see... As this quarter moves on, I'm going to start throwing in a lot more zigs, which I've made a video for you guys for. Like, if you guys go look back at my video on how to beat this crossman stuff, zigs was like my main attraction. Like, that thing works. And I've ran one, and it was wide open, and I didn't even throw it. So, like, it's actually really bothering me watching this video, and that's why I need to make these type of videos for you guys. Like, if you can, if you can, um, see where you're making mistakes at it'll help you guys get a lot better and it's right there you guys see i hit him with an out route um like i'm getting better myself i'm thinking to myself what am i doing like i know i had these zig routes in my back pocket to beat man and i haven't ran it one time yet so this is like even though i think this is super helpful for you guys because you guys can learn a lot from it as well like i'm learning myself like i'm like i'm like what is wrong with me why am i not thinking through this like i've played this so many times and it's sometimes you're just not thinking clearly um, and right here, uh, I see, I did notice right there. So this is a, that was the keyest play of the game. I started paying attention. So you guys noticed, I said, see where they're manning you from. He was cross manning that guy from all the way across the field. That was triangle. I said that, I was like, okay, that is in my back pocket. I tested it that play. It was wide open. Now Vic sold me on it. He didn't throw a touchdown. However, I know now, I know I have that play. And it's in my back pocket for the rest of the game. So right there, we go back to a zig route. Like I told you guys, I started learning. Once I got lucky, my mind like turned on. It's like, okay, I'm done playing this. You know what I mean? Like, wake up. So what I was saying was now that that outside fade that he was manning from all the way across the field that got wide open, that's in my back pocket. I have that to go to later. So I have that noted. And now I have a zig route from circle noted and a zig route from X noted. I've thrown both of them on this drive. I'm really, really starting to get a rhythm against this guy, and I'm starting to really feel confident. So you guys are going to see me wake up on offense for the rest of this game, really. Uh, right there, we hit just a, a little bit of a, I think it was an out route. That was Steve Smith. I want to say that was an out route. Maybe it was a zig. I'm not sure. One or the other. But uh, good route. Got about four there. But we're stuck in this red zone again where we really need to score. Um, seven, three is not going to be great for me here. So we're drawing up, we're drawing up a play where maybe we could um, kind of catch him with a high ball to Moss, and that's exactly what we go to, and that's exactly what we catch. So I had noticed that he was cross man in a circle. It was in the red zone. I'm thinking to myself, okay, how am I going to score against this? I know he's not going to have a deep blue. I have six. What is it? Six four Randy Moss that. I, that I can know can add catch. I'm like, hmm, one on one, struggling to score. But well, I tell you guys early in the game, when they're cross man like that, you kind of just have to get lucky. And you know what? You throw up to Randy Moss, sometimes you're going to get lucky. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I did right there. And we were able to get seven, and this man just starts sweating now. Like, if I'm this guy, I'm sweating. Because I probably should have gotten to stop that drive. I got unlucky. Then, he, then I started figuring it out, and I gave up seven. Now he's in trouble. So I need to get off the field. And he knows he probably should have already thrown a pick last drive. So if I'm him, I'm sweating a little bit. So we're going to try to figure this out. 
right here. We're sitting three. We got a spy out there for him. We got his playmaker manned up. Everything's bagged. I sent my playmaker a little early. I mean, my spy a little bit early. It allowed him to gain some yards there, but we were really happy with our defensive adjustments on that on that play. So able to take away his playmaker, take away his crosser, and we're taking a lot of things away from him that he we know he wants to do. Um, we're doing pretty much the same exact adjustments that he threw the ag on last um, last drive, and uh, it's pretty much bagging up everything right there. He goes five out, and t uh, all his early reads are taken away. The table route, the drag. And he ends up getting a sack because you take away three or four reads, and you're not going to have time to throw anything else. So keep making the same exact adjustments. We're taking away the uh, the playmaker, and we're deep quartering that outside guy for his crosser. Playmakers it up. You see it's bagged, and he gets another sack. Perfect defense. He's got to punt the ball back to us. We took away his playmaker the whole time. He kept playmaking it up right into the man-to-man. -man. We had a deep quarter for his crosser. It was taking that away, and we did a really, really good job on that possession. So... We got our stop. We got our touchdown. We got our stop. This is our game to lose now. Um, we've turned the game all the way around. We've successfully done it, and we're feeling good on offense now. We've kind of figured out how to beat all of his routes. I mean, all of his uh, adjustments, and uh, we're going to keep going back to him. So, right here, first play, first and ten. We audible into shot wheel. Look like shot wheel. I'm pretty sure. No, excuse me. We 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 audible into verticals here. So. The play that I agged him with Randy Moss on, I wanted to see if I could beat him deep with, and it didn't seem like I could, and I ended up taking a sack there. Um, but I wanted to try it. I remember, I remember thinking on the stream I wanted to try that, and I don't, I don't, I'm not mad at it. Um, probably should have taken my wheel route from my running back when it was open. But right here, I saw okay, the streak didn't beat him. I think the fade will. So now I'm trying a fade, and uh, we go up top. And we hag him, but we can't get the animation to hold on to it. So usually, honestly, you're going to catch that. I thought I was going to beat him. It did beat him, though. So I'm like, okay, all right, that doesn't work. And uh, that's okay. We'll just have to end up getting some first downs and moving the ball the generic way. But it, I don't mind. I'm not mad at myself for trying that um, as we miss another zig route. Very, very mad at myself for missing zig routes today. Uh, I guess I was getting greedy with my crosser, seeing that I was going to get open, but don't listen to me, though. Take take your zigs. If your zigs are open, if your drags are open, if your in routes are open, just take them, please. It's not worth getting shed and losing 10 yards instead of just take your gain of five, maybe more, and move to another day. So right here, we're going back to the zig route, and uh, this time he actually played hard flats, with, which was pretty good defense by him, but... We got a post route, we got a rack egg, and we're up four, boys. So we have fought all the way back in this game. We were down 13 to three. We were in a rough spot, feeling bad, feeling like we suck, playing like we suck, because we were sucking, yet somehow we're up four. So we'll take it, man. We're moving on. We're gonna have to get one more stop. If we can go get that stop, we'll win the game. Like if we stop him one more time, there's no chance we don't win this game. But we do have to stop him, so we'll see how this next drive goes. We've shown his gun tray wide flex is box. He cannot run any of those plays. We know exactly how to adjust for him, and he's smart. He comes out in the pistol. And I tell you what, when he came out of this pistol, I was like, uh-oh, I know what this is, man. He already killed me within the red zone. I already struggle with it. And he kills me with this thing. So right there, we should have probably actually had a loss, but he ends up dragging me for six because that's the way the game plays right now. And uh, he's going to keep going back to this until I stop it. So we're just going to keep trying a bunch of different things. I'm really mixing up. I tried pinch and D-line. I'm um, eventually going to try non-pinch D-line. I'm, I'm going to try a bunch of different things, manning up people on different spots to try to stop this run. And back-to-back -back times, we've actually felt like we've done a decent job against it. And he's dragged me forward for positive yards. Like right there, I thought he was bo pretty boxed up. Um, but we're not able to... Not able to get off the field. Uh, not able to stop him for before the first down marker. So, of course, he's going to keep running it. Starts adding motion to it, too. Um, not really worried about too many passes out of this. The only thing you do have to worry about is he could. He probably he does have route specialists. He's shown that from his crosser and gun trail wide flex. So he can make a decent play from it. Um, but I don't think there's too many great passing plays from it. But the thing about it is we're actually doing pretty decent against the run right now. 
he's just dragging me for extra yards. It's like, it's like okay, if I'm actually doing a good job against him, it's gaining four, five, six yards. I don't know how you can do much better, and you never know when he's going to actually break one, and then you're end up getting giving up thirty to forty. So, right there, like right there, and we hit him after one yard gain, two yard gain. He breaks the first tackle and drags the second guy for for eight yards. So it's just it's frustrating with the way the game plays right now to have to um, stop runs like this. But I was what I was complaining about mostly from this patch isn't really this fall forward thing. I'm more the more thing that bothers me is the number of fumbles. Uh, now there hasn't been any fumbles in this game, but I over this weekend probably fumbled 20 times, maybe maybe a little bit more. And I didn't even play the full 25 games. I only finished 20. Uh, I'm going to be bringing all uh, Yeah, I finished actually 18, I think. I'm going to be bringing you guys all those games on the YouTube. But I, and I got ultimate. I just, I'm not going to lie, I was fumbling a lot. I was tired. It was Sunday night. I had traveled, like I had traveled this weekend for basketball. So I was like, you know what, I'm just not going to finish. And uh, right there. So it's actually the craziest thing. I had manned up the tight end. And you guys can go back and check literally literally every single play and he ran the ball every single play and he finally passes the ball and it's the one play I am at the tight end I promise you I made up the tight end every single play and the one time that I don't he streaks him for a touchdown very 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 Hard to watch, tough to see, sucks to happen, but we give up a touchdown. Now, you guys see, I brought it out of the end zone, I fell at the 12 yard line. There was no way I was fumbling on that kickoff, so I, I fell down. I told you guys fumbles are bad, but I was not going to waste a play not being on a hash, so I had to bring it out to be on a hash. Right there, we go to double zigs, we pick up 10, move the chains. I'm telling you guys, take your zigs, take your zigs, take your zigs, take your zigs. I'm so mad at myself. I made this game so much harder on myself not having zig routes every single play on this guy. If you're going to cross man like that, I'm going to make you pay with zig routes. Plain and simple. Um, right here, we have our drag wide open. Take your drag. I tried to bomb him for a touchdown with my tight end. Uh, sorry, without my tight end, with my, uh, with my running back. Try to catch him lacking again. Every time I try to catch him lacking with my running back, bad things have happened. I threw a pick. I uh, I gave up uh, and then I gave up like three sacks. So just need to I just need to throw that one out. He obviously has done a good job against it after the first play. So just forget about it. But we take our zig right there. Get back uh, get back ahead on the sticks. Now I did have to blow a time out there that I did not want to have to do. However, I uh. I recognized that I wasn't going to have a good play, I, and I had messed up, and this was the biggest play of the game. It was third and five. I have to get this first down. So I blew the timeout, and you see I'm, I'm fading the circle. I'm going for the bomb. I'm seeing if I can catch him, and I think I got him, and we can't come down with it. Nine times out of ten, that's a rack egg. I thought we had the perfect play call. I had recognized where he was manning from, like I told you guys all day. Recognize where they're manning you from, and you can make them pay. I thought we made them pay right there, but we weren't able to get it done. Fourth and five here. You know we're going back to zig routes, man. I told you guys I should have been doing them all day, and I just wasn't. And we go back to it, and perfect play. Look at how many chunks of yards I'm picking up against this guy, just knowing I, I can do this zig route. It hurts me to not have done this a lot more. Um, but regardless, it's all good. We picked up the first down. We got out of bounds. We really only need three. So it's not like we're in a super rush right now. We have two timeouts. We have uh, just under a minute. So I'm just going to keep taking my zigs, man. Keep getting small chunks. Uh, we tried to get to the sideline there and couldn't. So I blow a timeout. Not mad about that. Wish I would have gotten to the sideline, but just, just didn't happen for me, which is cool. Like I said, I only need three. So I'm really only like nine yards short of field goal range here depending on the wind um something i wish i would have noted uh was the wind at the beginning of the video i'm not sure exactly what it was but that's something you should always take note of know what wind you're going to have in the fourth quarter but right there guys i told you earlier in the game i threw triangle on an outside fade and i got a touchdown out of it however he didn't get his feet down 
but I put it in my mental notes. I said, okay, I'm going to go back to that. Now, he had been deep bluing that side from that outside corner. You guys saw there was an outside deep blue there when I tried to bomb him with Moss earlier on that drive. However, he had taken it off the play before, that, that play right there. And I had noticed it, and I said, you know what? It's time for a shot. He knows I'm playing for a field goal here. He'll probably take his deep blue off. We fade triangle, which we had put in our mental notes from early in the game. There's things you have to do. We fade triangle. We beat him over the top, and we get ourselves a game-winning touchdown. Now, we just can't give up anything. 36 seconds left. He needs seven. Three doesn't help him, so we really can play super conservatively because we don't have to worry about field goals. I know I'm manning up his playmaker, and I'm not letting him throw that crosser. Right there, he goes for the play that got him a field goal early in the game, which was pure luck. And right there, we have it bagged. We get our tip drill pick. And we're going on conservative to run the game out. Um, well, I'm just going to run, um, I'm just going to run like long running plays, like toss, like a stretch, stuff like that, just to make sure I take as much time as possible while on conservative so I don't fumble. And then we'll just put the ball back to him if he ends up calling his timeouts. But he comes out in 3D, which I thought was really weird. He ends up getting pancaked. So we kind of just stand there and run around for a little bit and eventually get tackled. But he doesn't call his timeout, so he just lets the clock go, and then he decides to, I guess, quit. And, and I guess you can put it like that. But regardless, man, we made this game a lot harder on ourselves. Something I want you all to note, take your zigs, take your drags, take your ends. I can't stress enough, when you have an open receiver in this game, you're going to get shed if you get greedy, man. Just take your open routes. Number two, really just... Pay attention to what they're doing. Like, if someone is cross manning you crazy, which I know you guys, which I know you guys struggle with, and heck, you guys saw I struggle with it in the first half. You have to just lock in on what they're doing. See if they're if they're straight manning or cross manning on which guys, so that you can tell which routes you can get open. And then lastly, um, just um, make sure that you have um, pay attention to what they're doing on offense. So that that was my third point. Pay attention to what they're doing on offense. See where they're putting their guys that they like to the playmaker. See if they're uh, using route specialists on somebody so that you know that they can't do certain routes. Um, see if they're sending five out against you. Or see if they're max pretending to send in three. Just kind of learn tendencies early in the game and take advantage of those things. But um, that's all it is, man. I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys don't judge me too hard in the in the comment section with how bad I played in that first half. I love y'all, man. And take it easy. Peace.